I wanted to dig deeper into those themes and sharing and putting myself out there for everybody so that they could be like, man, if, if Matt's done this, like I can do that. And that's really what I'm hoping people take away from, you know, their interacting with my book. First thing is first, how you doing? How you holding up? I saw that you did the Boston Marathon a week or so ago and it looked kind of painful, not gonna lie. It was the most painful race I've ever, made, probably the most athletic, most painful athletic event I've ever participated in. Those hills, I just wasn't ready for it. The lack of training caught up to me at the finish line. And I've been recovering for the past week and a half now. You no, know, I hope you're eating like the pasta. I saw some Instagram stories of you, of Rachel just giving you pasta. And I'm like, that's all I would be doing. All I would be Yeah, doing. I actually ate too much the night before. I just, I got sick. I, uh, I was like on the Michael Scott, like office vibes, you know, you got a carb low before. I ate entirely too much, didn't get any sleep, but you know, the run got done and I'm back to stuffing my face with pasta. Amazing, amazing. Right in time for your book. So tell us, Matt, why a book? Why now? I know a lot of people, you know, they do podcasts. They do, they just are open with their fans on Instagram. And I feel like a book is a very serious thing to do. Uh, so tell us why a book? Uh, that's a, you know, that's a great question, Lauren. I, uh, I'm not, I love listening to podcasts, but podcasting, uh, it's, a, it's a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, rather than, you know, a podcast, there's not really a lot I want to say right now that I, uh, it, it fits into that genre. The book was the most concise way to get everything out that I wanted to share with everybody. And selfishly, you know, that book journey started for me when, um, when the show started airing and I'm just like, this is, I don't remember this taking place the way it did like the things I shared the things I wanted people to know about me you know just didn't make that final cut and um I thought it was important for people who wanted to have context to why I made the decisions I did and you know what led me to all those points for me to put a collection of of events in my life that have formed me into the man I am today and the cool thing about that collection of stories is that you could be someone who's never watched The Bachelor and takes so much away from this book. And that's what I was shooting for. You know, The Bachelor is a major part of my life and a major chapter in my life. But um, all the all the decisions that took place before that experience molded me into the person I am. So there's a bunch of different themes that people would reach out all across the country and all across the world as they were watching that show back where they're like, Matt, I really respect how you did this and that. And it's given me courage and strength to have this conversation with that person. And you know, that selfish desire initially to start out to, to like vindicate myself through this book is like, you know what, there's so many people that this can impact in their lives. And I wanted to share those things so that they can draw strength from my, you know, mishaps and uh, journey throughout life. I love it. Now, is there one, I mean, as Bachelor Nation fans are going to want to know, is there some nuggets in there that, you know, they're going to be surprised about that they're going to be like a I can't believe that happened behind the scenes. For sure. Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a, when, when, you're, when your exclusivity runs out, you know, you can speak a little bit more freely. So uh, there's, there's a lot of nuggets in there from, you know, my time on the show, from my time after interacting with other people uh, in Bachelor Nation. And, you know, the, the, the real story behind what got me into that position to begin with. And that was, you know, this fallout that I had with Claire uh, having never spoken to that person, but uh, it's a very interesting and, and wild story. And uh, there's a bunch of, bunch of little anecdotes like that throughout the book. I forgot about that. Right? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. And I would imagine that you are going to dive deep into the controversies that surrounded the season finale, which was not an easy thing I would imagine for you to deal with. Yep. Uh, what can fans expect from that in the book? they can expect uh, open dialogue. You know, I, uh, I wasn't going to put anything in there that I didn't run past Rachel. So Rachel and I had conversation uh, about how that story, how those events took place. And uh, it was important for me to include that because it's a, it's part of, you know, our story and I can't tell parts of the story. I got to tell the whole story. So, um, and that, that's, you know, that gets back to the theme of the book. It's like a lot of the things where you, you need to uh, embrace uncomfortable conversations or where you see the most growth. And I saw that with my dad, I've seen it with Rachel 
And I'm challenging myself to, to commit to that in other areas of my life too. What did Rachel think of the book? I would imagine she's read it. She has read it. Yeah. Um, she enjoyed it. You know, I, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect just because, um, you know, it's she, her being one of the first people to see it. You know, it's like I'm sharing very deep, intimate things that have I've experienced in my life and a lot of which she already knew. But uh, seeing her read things for the first time and watching her, you know, get emotional reading the book was it was what I was hoping for that reaction. Like it's it strikes it strikes a chord with everybody. And, um, you know, the people who have had the, the chance to read it, um, different themes and different parts of the book have resonated with them in different ways, which was the goal. Because, um, like I said, when we started, there's a lot of different themes. One might not resonate you like another one does. And so uh, having gone through so many different experiences and so many relatable things pop up in my life from family to work to faith, uh, I think that someone will be every person who reads it will be able to take something away from it. What a great book then. You got it. You got yes. something for everyone. You got something for everyone. Uh, well, speaking of Rachel, I do love the two of you guys on Instagram. I follow both of you and you're just, you look like you're having a great time and it looks like your relationship is exactly where it is meant to be. Um, yep. Is that safe? To, I'm like making assumptions. I'm like over here. <laughs> great. So, but Matt, you tell us. <laughs> No, that's, uh, I think you're spot on because a lot of what we do um, isn't in unison with the rest of, you know, the bachelor couples and, you know, doing this and doing that. Like we, we march to the beat of our own drum. And I think that comes from just being physically and mentally, emotionally drained from that process where you're just like, you know, we're going to take a, we're going to take a stab at doing this our own way uh, mm -hmm. since, you know, there's a lot of things that we would have liked from a, a resources base that, you know, um, weren't there. So uh, we, we've gone about things our own way and it's proven to be the best way because, you know, we know what's best for each other. Um, and we're just real and authentic. Like we're not, we're not trying to please anybody. We're just trying to live our lives. And when we do that, along with just being good people, good things happen. And um, I'm very excited for what's to come and how, how our relationships progress since that point. I love it. And I would imagine that, you know, you said like the other bachelor couples, I would, I would imagine that like, it might be easier for you guys to have a more real and authentic relationship without being attached to the show. Yeah, I mean, again, very fortunate from that standpoint. Uh, and, it, and it's sad though, because I think when you go through a, such an amazing experience like that where you get to meet all these cool people and do all these cool things you would hope that you know you're on better terms and unfortunately you know the way that that things often play out you know a couple years out or a couple months out a lot of those people who were championing championing the show and um faces and voices for the franchise you know are left with a bitter taste in their mouth so um yeah, it, it's unfortunate because it's so cool and there's such an opportunity to to double down on those stories and people, but you know, it is what it is. Well, one person that is from Bachelor Nation that I know you're still best friends with is Tyler Cameron. How, <laughs> how I saw an article the other day that was so funny that he was like, the things I miss and I don't miss about living with Matt James. And I'm like, what? <laughs> hey, there's probably a lot of, 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 of the latter because I... Uh, I have very uh, quirky habits. Yeah. And I could probably guess what's on that list without even reading it. So uh, yeah, he's uh, he's probably had enough of me for right now. I, uh, I have a tendency to leave things places. Organized chaos is what I call it. You know, uh, it's fine. Yeah. As long but as no, we now, the opposite, you know? It's oh yeah. Like, no, yeah. Yeah. Constantly picking up after everything I'm leaving around the place and um, you know, getting the same complaints I was getting from Tyler. So, you know, at least I'm consistent. So at least you're being true to yourself. Like, hello. Yeah, I'm consistent. The main question that bachelor is always like, well, when are they going to get engaged? But you know, you're right. not really into the whole bachelor thing anymore. Uh, but is that a conversation that you guys have? For sure. Uh, I think that when you date someone at this, at both of our ages, that's something that 
um, you think about or, you know, you're wasting each other's time, you know, uh, that's the, the reason why you should be dating someone to figure that out. So, uh, yeah, we're in that process. I love it. Okay, Matt, before I let you go, describe your book in one word. Just what would that one word be? Mm, um, that's a great question. What would my book be in one? Uh, motivation. Motivation. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that I've been through that a lot of people have been through, shared experiences, and for them to pull the motivating aspects and themes from those uh, those stories will be um, what I hope they take away from it and just to call back on, like, yeah, yeah, Matt went through that, man, my boss thinks, yeah, Matt had a, yeah, so it's just like calling back, recalling all the things that we've been through and uh, using it to empower themselves into uh, what they're destined for, and that's just happiness.